Although gaming has seen a few simulations or top-down action iterations of the firefighting profession, the Super Nintendo had two that I can remember, it isn't a well that is often pulled from when it comes to game design. The Jima games though have brought us Fire Girl Hack and Slash Rescue DX, which releases on the Nintendo Switch this week. Is it too hot to handle or a smouldering disaster? Well thank you to the publishing team for the review code and now let's find out. The city has been plagued by numerous fire outbreaks and Fire Girl, daughter of the late firefighting hero, has joined the existing company to hack at doors, soak at flames and rescue any survivors. Somehow though, the old tales that were told in the firehouse of a malevolent fire spirit become more fact than legend. As you progress through the game, you will find out that these fires were no mere coincidence and the fire monsters are in fact very real. So gameplay wise this is a roguelite platformer that will see you controlling Fire Girl as she responds to new fires in procedurally generated levels, rescuing survivors before the time runs out. Things can be broken into two sections, upgrading the firehouse or carrying out the missions. In the beginning the firehouse has no funds and therefore no equipment or personnel to run the facilities within. Your main character will gain funds after every mission which can be used to upgrade and bolster the firehouse as well as recruit some of the people you save along the way. These include a medic, a chef and a fundraiser with the latter allowing for fans to contribute money whenever a mission is successful. Rescuing civilians is crucial in order to unlock facilities and mechanics in the game that will make future missions a bit easier. Even if you fail a mission, the rescued survivors will still count towards the mission score at the end of a level. Every time you rescue someone, your fan count will increase. Note that animals do not count as civilians that need rescuing, but rescuing them will also increase your fan score. As mentioned earlier, the more fans you have, the more donations will be awarded at the end of a level if it was successfully completed. Fire Girl will enter different levels which will require her to find the survivors and exit before the time runs out. Her main tools are her pressurised hose which can be used as a jetpack by pressing the ZR button when airborne as well as for dousing flames. The jetpack allows you to reach great heights although it requires water and the key is to use this resource sensibly. You will need it to put out fires but is it best to focus on putting out the flames that get in your way? Putting them out also adds a few seconds to the timer with tougher fires rewarding more time. The levels will have power ups that can be collected in order to replenish health, time or water and running out of water can lead to a failed mission simply because fires cannot be put out quickly enough or the character lacks the power for her jetpack to reach some of the heights required. Controls for the jetpack and movement in general are responsive and easy to grasp although there were a few times when she would remain in the jetpack animation upon landing and this caused many unnecessary collisions with fires and the wasting of water. Fire Girl's axe can be used to break down doors and obstacles and the levels become vertical labyrinths that will require the player to traverse as quickly as possible. In the beginning, the only levels that I personally encountered were the apartment blocks which were fine but became extremely repetitive regardless of whether the level layouts were procedurally generated or not as they still felt too similar. Soon after, I took on runaway trains, forests and hotels which did bring a lot more variety to proceedings. It is pretty fun to play in short bursts and traversing through each level attempting to rescue civilians can feel satisfying when you are successful. This doesn't always happen, especially in the beginning though, and the problem is how random the levels become, making some feel more unfair than others. The difficulty fluctuates dramatically from level to level, with some littered with power-ups and others not having a single one. I found myself with enough time to explore the level once all civilians were rescued but had little incentive to do so in fear of dying and getting a mediocre payout. There was no real risk or reward either which would have persuaded me to risk it all and check out other rooms. The most common fires will only reward the player with mere seconds which basically equates to the time it takes to put them out anyway. If these gave at least 10 seconds it would allow the player to decide on putting them out and bank that time to help with more exploration. As you unlock more facilities within the firehouse, your character will gain access to better equipment and functions that will make the game a lot more accessible and forgiving. This becomes vital once the fire tombs need to be found and collected within levels as these are integral to the story. The base building was probably the most fleshed out feature of the game as the player is given clear indications on how much it will cost to unlock a passive ability. The rescuing of survivors was exciting, mainly because some of them appear at the firehouse offering their skills for a fee. 
Overall, the gameplay is certainly fun, but the heavy implementation of randomly generated levels alongside the mixed ratios of enemies to power-ups can lead to moments of frustration. Gameplay scores 13 out of 20. Controls are responsive and easy to use, save for a couple of glitchy moments such as the aforementioned jetpack landing animation. On the whole, they score 16 out of 20. The visuals used here have the 2D HD feel, flat pixelated characters in a three-dimensional environment. Although some of the scenery can become repetitive, the developers have filled the backgrounds with some gorgeous details that reveal all of their facets as you traverse them. The clever use of parallax really brings the world to life, giving the illusion of being in a fully spaced out area. One of the best examples is seeing the other firefighters down the hall and in other rooms within the background of the fire station. A lot of attention has gone to the fire effects of the game as well, with the imp-like flames incandescent aura and the fire wells juxtaposed against the pitch black sky. Speaking of the flames, all fire is pixelated and flat like the rest of the characters, but they radiate life and humour. They dance in groups and squeal when doused with water. There are many different pyro monsters in the game, each with its own personality and design. Some are akin to what you would find in a Fleischer Studios cartoon with flames walking around with stumpy legs for example. There are a few story segments that flesh out what is causing all of the sentient flames to appear so often and they really did help the narrative and tone of the game. Performance wise the frame rate can suddenly drop when entering a room and at one point in the woods level the camera zoomed out to the point that the world turned on its head. This did rectify itself but it did leave me wondering whether this was intentional or a bug. I feel inclined to lean towards the latter. In terms of the audio there are some great tunes and special effects that are akin to arcade hits such as Metal Slug whenever someone is rescued or an item has been collected. Water sound effects are decent and as mentioned before the squealing sounds some of the fires make when being extinguished really does give them that extra layer of personality. Visuals do have an undeniable charm to them, but a few performance issues do let things down a tad. They score 15 out of 20. Audio has an arcadey feel to it, and the music in general supports the gameplay. It also scores 15 out of 20. Fire Girl Hack and Splash Rescue DX costs £14.99, and regional equivalents are on your screen now. The price isn't necessarily unfair as the presentation is of a good standard, the gameplay loop is fun if a little repetitive and the concept is fairly unique. However some of the issues mentioned such as the random nature of levels leading to things feeling a bit unfair at times, the difficulty spikes that this can cause and a few technical issues did hamper my enjoyment a bit which will be reflected in the score here. On balance value gets 13 out of 20. To conclude, Fire Girl has a lot to love in terms of visuals, base building and platforming. What it lacks to become a true gem is a more balanced approach to its procedurally generated levels which needs to be the most polished part of a game of this nature. For every level that sees you saving every victim and their cat and escaping a collapsing building, you have five that end with your demise because of time constraints, water shortages or a mixture of all of the above. If you are a resilient gamer that tends to play a lot of roguelike games, this is definitely one to consider. For everyone else, just be aware of some of the issues highlighted here. Fire Girl Hack and Splash Rescue DX gets a switch up score of 72%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. A big thank you to Asdin who wrote this one for us, don't forget to check out his channel Grinning Wolf Games, there will be a link to it in the top in comment. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos, take care and until next time, happy gaming. <laughs>